a very good afternoon students i hope that you must have all fared very well in your neat exams let us have a look at the questions which have come from zoology part so let's solve the first question it is question number 18 we are solving the rr code now select the wrong statements the first is as i always tell you mark whether it is asked right or whether it is asked wrong now pseudopodia are locomotory and feeding structures yes in sporozoa no they are present in amoeboid protozoa or which is called sarcodina class or rhizopoda class so they are not found in sporozoa sporozoa are the protozoa which do not have any locomotory organ right so this would be the answer rest all the three options mushrooms belong to basidiomycetes yes cell wall is present in fungi yes it is chitinous cell wall and in plant a cellulosic cell wall mitochondria are the powerhouse of cell in all kingdoms except monera yes because monera includes prokaryotes in them membrane bound organelles are absent so mitochondria is also absent but in all the other kingdom that is protista fungi plantae animalia they include all uni uh, eukaryotes so they all will have mitochondria so option 2 3 and d are absolutely correct only option 1 is wrong wrong which is the answer please note this down we'll solve the next question soon now students let's see more questions the more solutions for neat 2018 zoology exam now it is question number 27 the code is rr code the stage during which separation of the paired homologous chromosome begins is it's a direct line of ncrt students it is clearly written that the diplotean stage is characterized by the dissolution of synaptonemal complex if you remember the two homologous chromosomes for example if this is one homologous chromosome this is another homologous chromosomes then in the zygotene stage there is pairing of these with a synaptonemal complex so here there is synapses or pairing of homologous chromosomes that happens then in the pachytene stage there is exchange of genetic material between the non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes that means recombination genetic recombination occurs here and after this the beginning of diplotene is characterized by the dissolution of this synaptonemal complex so that now both the homologous chromosomes separate from each other except at the point where crossing over has taken place which we called x shaped chiasmata so this all happens in diplotene and diagenesis is the last stage of prophase of meiosis 1 in which nuclear membrane will disappear nucleolus will disappear and there is terminalization of the um uh, chiasmata so it's a direct question line from ncrt answer is number 2 please note this down the question number 28 again a question of cell structure the golgi complex participates in now students if you remember golgi complex is a membrane bound organelle which is found close to a uh, nucleus and its main function is packaging of materials here vesicles will be formed in which there will be some secretion so it forms secretory vesicles answer is this respiration in bacteria this is performed by mesosomes fatty acid breakdown is a work of endoplasmic reticulum and activation of amino acids is done by trrn trna so basically again golgi complex the main function is packaging of material or formation of secretory vesicles students this question Question number thirty-one of R R code is slightly tricky question. The two functional groups characteristic of sugars are now. If you remember sugars, the simple monosaccharides, which we called, they are aldehyde or ketone derivatives, right? So um, uh, there is a hydrocarbon chain. That means there will be carbon, there will be hydrogen. Plus there were O H groups attached to the carbons, and on one carbon. there was either aldehyde group or ketone group right so they have basically two groups one is the hydroxyl group hydroxyl group means the oh group and one is the carbonyl group this is basically c double bond o which is attached to one carbon and the other on other carbons there is oh group attached so they have a carbonyl functional group and they have a hydroxyl functional group so answer would be 4 they do not have any methyl or any phosphate so it is not very difficult to solve this please note this down 
let's solve the next question of rr code for zoology question number 33 which of the following is true for nucleolus we know that inside the nucleus there is a structure called nucleolus and it is non membranous we have uh, written and its main function it's a line of ncrt is in the synthesis of rrna so let us see it takes part in spindle fiber no students spindle fiber is a role of centriole spindle fiber formation is done by centriole it is a membrane bound no it does not have any membrane larger nucleoli are present in dividing cell nothing of such happens it is a site for active rrna synthesis yes so it's a direct question answer would be 4 please note this down now students coming to question number 46 of rr code match the items given in column 1 with those in column 2 and select the correct option we have practiced in our courses i have always told you please put correct or incorrect so we have to choose the correct options now tidal volume we know it is the um, uh, amount of air that we take in or we exhale out during normal respiration and it is about 500 to 550 ml in, in ncrt it is given approximately 500 ml inspiratory reserve volume is the extra additional amount of air that we can take after tidal volume and we know ncrt clearly written it is 2500 to 3000 ml expiratory reserve volume is the additional amount of air that we can expire out we can exhale out after the tidal volume and it is about 1000 to 1100 ml these are all the values given in ncrt directly and residual volume is the amount of volume which remains in the lungs even when we forcefully exhale out all the air and this is about 1100 to 1200 ml now this is a match the column option students so a should be 3 let us write here a should be 3 b is 1 c is 4 and d is 2 all right now let us see what are the options given let us follow the trick that i have been teaching you let us see this now a we know a is 3 so we just have to choose between these two we don't have to look in option a 1 and 4 now b b we know is 1 this is the correct answer you will save time like this so let's check a is 3 b is 1 c is 4 yes and d is 2 so the answer is 2 please note this down all right, so students, let's solve few more questions of RR code in zoology. It is question number 47. Which of the following option correctly represents, let us mark, correctly represents the lung conditions in asthma and emphysema respectively. That means first we have to look for asthma and then emphysema. We know that asthma uh, is due to inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles in which there is constriction in them so that there is difficulty in breathing. Whereas in emphysema, it is a chronic respiratory disorder. It occurs due to cigarette smoking. And in these, the alveolar walls, the walls between the alveoli gets damaged. So the respiratory surface area decreases and thus the exchange of gases is affected. Let us see the options now. So first we have to see asthma. Increased respiratory surface, no asthma has got no connection with respiratory surface. So this could not be the answer. And emphysema is definitely not inflammation of bronchioles. Then, increased number of bronchioles in asthma, nothing like that happens. Increased respiratory surface in emphysema, no, it is the decreased respiratory surface. Then, inflammation of bronchioles, yes, this happens in asthma. So, let us see, this could be our option. Decreased respiratory surface, yes, because alveolar walls are collapsed, they are damaged, and so the respiratory surface area is decreased in emphysema. And here, decreased respiratory surface in asthma, no. Inflammation of bronchioles in emphysema, no. This is a direct NCRT question, students. These lines are given in NCRT. Answer is option number 3. No. Let's see one more question in RR code of zoology, NEED 2018. Match the items given in column 1 with those in column 2 and select the correct option. First is tricuspid valve. Now students, we know that if we draw a heart, we know there are two atria and two ventricles. This is right atrium, this is left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. From here, pulmonary artery will go to the lungs, it will carry deoxygenated blood. And from left ventricle, aorta, it's a very rough diagram students, will arise. Now, the valve which is present between right atrium and right ventricle is made up of three cusps and it is called tricuspid valve. 
the valve between left atrium and left ventricle is made up of two cusp and it is called bicuspid or mitral valve and the valves which are present between right ventricle and pulmonary artery plus there is one more between left ventricle and aorta they are also made up of three cusp but they are semi lunar they are moon like half moon like shape so they are called semi lunar valves both these semi lunar valves one is called pulmonary semi lunar valve one is called aortic semi lunar valve now let us see the options tricuspid valve we know it is between right atrium and right ventricle so between right atrium the option a is matched with 3 now bicuspid valve is between left atrium and left ventricle that means b is 1 and semi lunar valve is between right ventricle and pulmonary artery yes this is pulmonary semi lunar valve so c is 2 now let us see the options which are given now we'll again follow the same rule which we have been practicing a is 3 question is finished you don't have to look but let us check here b is 1 yes c is 2 yes so the answer is option number 3 Please. now students let us see one more question from neet 2018 rr code zoology it is question number 51 and it comes from the chapter of evolution according to hugo de vries the mechanism of evolution is we know that according to darwin evolution is due to minor variations which are heritable whereas according to hugo de vries the um, speciation that is the formation of a new species is the evolution is because of mutations which are random directionless large all right so mutations and it is a single step uh, mutation so the very next generation that is formed could be a new species it's a large step mutation that is that uh, forms a new species so hugo de vries is big basically he said that evolution is due to mutations now let us see the options phenotypic variations no phenotypic variations who said it is lemark who said that it is the inheritance of acquired characters which was lemarkism and this was discarded saltation yes because mutations are called saltation multi step mutations no multi step mutations means the minor variations which darwin talked about here it is a single step mutation which is called saltation which is responsible for speciation formation of new species according to hugo de vries so third option is also not correct and minor mutations are also not responsible it is the large random directionless mutations called saltations which are responsible so the answer would be option 2 now students coming to the next question of neet 2018 rr code in zoology question number 52 match the items given in column 1 with those of column 2 and select the correct option now this is a question based on menstrual cycle that is human reproduction chapter of class 12th proliferative phase now students we know that menstrual cycle has main three phases in the first phase in the ovary there is development of follicles and it will mature to form a dominant graafian follicle at the same time in the uterus there will be proliferation of endometrium so these two things happen together in ovary and in uterus so proliferative phase is also called follicular phase because follicle development is taking place in ovary and endometrial proliferation is taking place in uterus now after the complete maturation of graafian follicle there is ovulation due to lh surge so ovum is released into the fallopian tube and the remaining graafian follicle the remaining graafian follicle it forms corpus luteum so in the ovary the next stage is luteal phase and this corpus luteum secretes progesterone and this progesterone makes the uterine endometrium secretory so that it can hold the fertilized egg it can hold the pregnancy and it can maintain the pregnancy so secretory phase is also called luteal phase because corpus luteum is formed in ovary whereas there is endometrium which is becoming secretory in uterus now if fertilization has not happened then there will be withdrawal of this corpus luteum will shrink progesterone levels will come down estrogen levels will come down and so now the endometrium will start shedding off it will break off and that will be seen as the bleeding through the vagina 
which is called menstrual bleeding or menstruation so menstruation is the breakdown of endometrial lining when fertilization has not happened all right now let's check a is 2 a is 2 answer is solved you don't have to look into other options but let's check here b is 3 yes b is 3 secretory and luteal are same and menstruation is the breakdown of endometrial line let's solve one more question from me 2018 rr code zoology that is question number 54 and this has come from the biological classification chapter about protozoa which we have read in animals uh, in zoology now ciliates differ from all other protozoans in now ciliata class of protozoa was having some special characters like if you remember they have a cytostome they have cytopike they have trichocyst for offense and defense and i told you that they have two types of nucleus right you remember when we draw the diagram of paramecium there were two nucleus one was a large nucleus this is called macronucleus which is responsible for all the metabolic activities of the cell and there were micronucleus the smaller in size they could be more in number also and this was responsible for the heredity and reproduction of the cell so let us see using pseudopodia for capturing prey no pseudopodia are not found in ciliates they are found in amoeboid class having a contractile vacuole from removing excess water students contractile vacuole is present in all protozoa which are living in fresh water whether they are flagellated whether they are amoeboid whether they are ciliated so it is not a unique character of ciliate so we cannot mark this as the answer using flagella for locomotion no this is a character of flagellated protozoans they move by cilia so all these three are wrong having two types of nucleus yes they have dimorphic nucleus condition two types of nuclei answer is four please note this down Another question of zoology from me 2018 RR code is question number 55 identify the vertebrate group of animals characterized by crop and gizzard in its digestive system now students all these are vertebrates avis that is birds reptiles amphibians and ostic thighs means the bony fishes they all are vertebrates and out of these it's a direct question from NCRT birds have two additional chambers in their elementary canal one is crop which is for storage of grains storage of food and gizzard g for gizzard i told you that it is like a mixer which is present inside so it is g for gizzard and g for grinding why because we have learned that modern living birds are toothless they don't have teeth then how will they uh, uh, you know break down their food they generally take grains they will get stored in the crop and whenever they will need energy then this gizzard will grind them and then they will be digested and absorbed so it is a direct character of birds or avis Please next question of zoology rr code need 2018 which of the following feature is used to identify a male cockroach from a female cockroach let's see four wings with darker tegmina students four wings are found in both uh, the male and the female cockroaches both the wings in fact the forewing and the uh, hind wings they both are found in both now presence of caudal style you remember i told you that anal style or caudal style this is found only in males this is absent in females a line of ncrt it helps in copulating the female by the male that is transferring the sperms into the female body so this is present only in males let us see other options presence of a boat shaped sternum on ninth abdominal segment no why in female students there is a boat shaped sternum but the fifth the, the sorry the seventh sternum is boat shaped and along with eighth and ninth sternum it forms the uh, female genital pouch so anyways this is not a characteristic feature this is wrong the boat shaped sternum is seventh abdominal segment sternum and not ninth then presence of anal sarcae anal sarcae are phonoreceptors that means they perceive sound and they are present in both male and female cockroaches so the uh, character which with we can differentiate whether it's a male cockroach or a female cockroach is the presence of anal or caudal style the next question of zoology from rr code me 2018 is which of the following does not undergo metamorphosis now we know what is metamorphosis 
when a larva is converted into adult then this is called metamorphosis meta means change and morphos means morphology their external appearance the change in the external appearance is called metamorphosis that means students they are asking whether this will happen or not and they are saying which does not undergo metamorphosis let us see moth now moth are arthropods and in arthropods we have seen we have read that only in silver fish there was no metamorphosis there was direct development but in all other there were indirect development larval stage will be present and metamorphosis will occur tunicata tunicata if you remember they are urochordata in which the notochord is present in the tail of larva that means there is a larva and this will get converted into adult you remember we call this retrogressive metamorphosis because tail is present the notochord is present in the larval tail but it gets disappeared in adult so it is retrograde so yes metamorphosis is happening now earthworm now this is a direct line students we have read that in annelida except nearis which shows trochophore larval stage all others and even in chapter 7 structural organization where we read earthworm in detail we have discussed that in, a, in earthworm the development is direct and direct development means there is no larval stage so that means that the young one resembles the adults there will not be any metamorphosis so this is the answer let's discuss option 4 starfish starfish is an echinoderms and in echinoderms we have read various larval stages like bipinnaria uh, uh, brachiolaria all these so yes starfish also shows metamorphosis answer is option number 3 let's see the next question it is question number 59 in zoology portion rr code of neat 2018 Which one of these animals is not a homeotherm? We know there are two types of animals: warm-blooded or homeothermic animals, which can regulate their own body temperature. And homeotherms or warm-blooded animals are aves, that is birds, and mammals. Whereas the pisces, that is the fishes, both bony and cartilaginous fishes. the amphibians like frog and the reptiles they all cannot maintain their body temperature they are cold blooded or poikilothermic and even the other lower non chordates uh, are also poikilothermic homeotherms are only belonging to these two class now this is actually camulus students it's a printing mistake camulus means camel and camel we know is a mammal it is a true mammal placental mammal so this will be homeotherm yes chelon is turtle and turtle is a reptile this is not a homeotherm so answer would be chelon is not a homeotherm Ma macropus is basically kangaroo and kangaroo is again a mammal we know it is a metatherian mammal having pouch on its belly so this is also homeotherm and cetacula is parrot it is a bird belonging to avis class so this is also homeotherm so only option 2 chelon that is turtle is a poikilothermic cold blooded reptile answer is 2 question number 16 zoology portion from um um rr code in need 2018 is the transparent lens in the human eye is held in its place by now students if you remember the human eye structure which we have discussed suppose this is the human eye this is the outer sclera layer this is the sclera layer then there is choroid layer in the choroid layer students anteriorly it forms a ciliary body and iris like this the gap between iris is pupil and here there is a lens it is a transparent crystalline bi convex lens and this is held in place it's a line of ncrt by suspensory ligaments which are attached to ciliary body like this all right and then the innermost layer would be retina like this and from here the optic nerve leaves anyways we are not dealing in detail so lens is held in its place by these suspensory ligaments and they are attached between lens on one side and to the ciliary body on the other side let us see now smooth muscles attached to iris no ligaments attached to iris no iris has got no connection with lens 
लिगमेंट्स अटैच टू सीलियरी बॉडी यस स्मूथ मसल्स अटैच टू सीलियरी बॉडी नो सो इट्स अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन सस्पेंसरी लिगमेंट्स अटैच टू सीलियरी बॉडी आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री लेट्स सॉल्व अनादर क्वेश्चन कमिंग टू जोलॉजी पार्ट इन आर आर कोड ऑफ नीट टू थाउजेंड एटीन स्टूडेंट्स द क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी वन लेट अस सी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्ट्रक्चर्स और रीजन इज इन करेक्टली पेयर्ड विथ इट्स फंक्शन वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द रॉन्ग वन ना हाइपोथैलेमस प्रोडक्शन ऑफ रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन्स येस देर आर रिलीजिंग एंड इनिबिटरी फैक्टर्स हॉर्मोन्स विच आर रिलीज फ्रॉम हाइपोथैलेमस लाइक यू रिमेंबर ग्रोथ हॉर्मोन रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन गोनाडोट्रॉपिन रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन एंड ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स देन इफेक्ट द release and of the anterior pituitary hormone so yes it is a function regulation of thermostat yes it is called the thermostat of the body so regulation of temperature is very much a function of hypothalamus hunger center is present here we have seen thirst center yes so these all are the functions of hypothalamus so this is correctly matched we have to find out the incorrectly matched pair now limbic system now what is a limbic system you remember we have studied that in the cerebral cortex part there are some uh, uh, gray matter areas like amygdala then hippocampus these constitute the limbic system and this limbic system along with hypothalamus these are the functions which hypothalamus is performing alone but along with limbic system and hypothalamus they both together perform very important function students the expressions which we have if there is a damage in this system we will not be able to express whether we are happy we are sad we are angry so the expressions comes because of this then the sexual arousal is because of this working together of limbic system and hypothalamus so these are the functions so let us see now what is written in the option it consists of fiber tracts that interconnects different region of brains and controls movements no this is not the function so this is incorrectly matched medulla oblongata controls respiration yes we have seen that respiratory rhythm center the main respiratory center which controls respiration is in medulla oblongata so yes this is correct and cardiovascular reflexes yes we have seen it regulates the heart rate it regulates the um, uh, blood pressure and even the gastric secretion center they are also in medulla oblongata so this is absolutely correct matching pair corpus callosum we know that be between the two halves of cerebrum that is between the two cerebral hemisphere there is a band of nerves and because of this the two hemispheres are in coordination and this is a character of eutherians that is true mammals the placental mammals only in those mammals this corpus callosum is found so it is a band of fibers connecting left and right cerebral hemisphere this is also absolutely right both 1 3 and 4 are correct option 2 is wrong answer is 2 need 2018 code rr question number 62 in zoology portion is Which of the following hormones can play a significant role in osteoporosis? Now we know, students, we have read in class 11, locomotion and movement chapter. Osteo means bone and porosis means pores. The bones become porous. Why? Because there is uh, less of calcium in it. It generally occurs in old age. Why does it happen? Because in old age, especially the menopausal women, in them there is estrogen deficiency, because of which the bones become porous. This is one. common cause another common cause if you remember students there is a parathyroid gland you remember four parathyroid gland on the back side of thyroid they secrete parath hormone and this parath hormone is responsible for increasing calcium ions in blood so if there is excess of this parath hormone then it will work towards increasing more calcium in the blood from where it will get this calcium it will take absorb this calcium from the bones so the bones will become porous so either due to estrogen deficiency or due to parath hormone excess these are the two main causes of osteoporosis now let's see the question which of the following hormones play a significant role estrogen and parathyroid gland students if we see the other options progesterone has no role in it it is the pregnancy maintaining hormone aldosterone has role in sodium absorption we have seen 
Prolactin is the milk producing hormone which is secreted by anterior pituitary. So the correct option is 1. Code RR question number 63 need 2018. Which of the following is an amino this should be acid students amino acid derived hormone. Now we know that some hormones are derived from amino acids some are polypeptides some are derived from steroids. So there are various types of hormones. Estradiol, we know it is steroid hormone, a female sex hormone. Igdioson, this is seen in lower non-cardates. Epinephrine, yes. This is a derivative of tyrosine amino acid. And estriol is another um, uh, estrogen which is also steroid derived. So the answer is number 3. The next question from RR code. Need 2018 is question number 64. Match the items given in column 1 with those in column 2 and select the correct options. Let us see students. Glycosuria. We know glyco means glucose and urea word is used for urine. So that means when the glucose starts coming in urine it is called glycosuria. Let us see this is here. So 1 is A is 4. If you see the options you already have ticked the option answer. Because there is A is matched with 4 in only one of the options. But let us see still. Gout. Gout we know it is the accumulation of uric acid in joints. So B is 1. Renal calcular means the renal stones, the kidney stones and their mass of crystallized salts. Calcium carbonate, calcium oxalates within the kidney. Renal means kidney. And glomerulonephritis means, itis means inflammation. So it is the inflammation of glomeruli. So A is 4, yes. B is 1, yes. C is 2, yes. D is 3, yes. Answer is number 4. Another question from RR code need 2018 is question number 65. Again match the items given in column 1 with those in column 2 and select the correct option. Let us see students. This is a function that is given and here is the part of the excretory system. Now ultra filtration we know that urine formation happens in two three steps ultra filtration selective reabsorption and tubular secretion. Ultra filtration occurs through glomerulus and Bowman's capsule and they are together called Malpighian body or Malpighian corpuscle. So ultra filtration is related to Malpighian corpuscle. So A is 4. These two could be the answers. Now let us see B and answer will be decided. B is concentration of urine. We know that it is the length of loop of Henle which decides the concentration of urine. So concentration is related to loop of Henle. Already the answer is given. But let us see the options here. C is 2. Transport of urine. It is done by ureters which come out through the hilum from the uh, kidneys. Urine is formed in kidneys and it will only be transported by these ureters which are long muscular tubes. And they will carry this urine up till the urinary bladder. And in the bladder this urine is stored. <coughs> so storage of urine is a function of bladder. Let us check. <coughs> and then it will be thrown out of the body, excreted out of the body through urethra. So A is 4, yes. B is 1, C is 2 and D is 3. Answer is option number 2. Next question from RR code NEET 2018 is question number 67, uh, 66. Which of the following gastric cells indirectly helps in erythropoiesis? Now it's a little indirect question students as the word indirectly is given in the question itself. We know that in gastric glands there are mucus, uh, there are goblet cells, they secrete mucus. Then there are chief cells or peptic cells. They secrete the various proenzymes like pepsinogen, prorenin, gastric lipase, all the enzymes. And then there are parietal cells or auxentic cells. And what does these do? They secrete number one HCL and number two they secrete Castle's intrinsic factor. And this Castle's intrinsic factor students is responsible for absorption of vitamin B12. Right? Now. If you remember, we have learned that in the process of erythropoiesis, erythro means red, poiesis means formation, the formation of RBC, the immature RBC, that is reticulocyte, is converted into mature RBC, that is erythrocyte. So the reticulocyte, which is the immature RBC, is converted into erythrocyte, that is the mature RBC. 
and it requires two maturation factors that is folic acid and vitamin b12 now students if there will be some problem with the parietal cells intrinsic factor will not be released if this is not released vitamin b12 will not be absorbed even if we take it in diet it will not be absorbed and if this will not be present in the body then there will be a problem in this stage and mature rbc will not be formed so which cell is indirectly helping in erythropoiesis it is the parietal cells or the auxentic cells please note this down let's see the next question rr code need 2018 question number 67 match the items given in column 1 with those in column 2 and select the correct option now let us see students these are the three plasma proteins that are given fibrinogen we know fibrinogen and prothrombin both of these are involved in blood clotting so a is 2 already answer is ticked let us check oops i'm sorry now globulin globulin we know there are alpha beta and gamma globulin alpha beta globulin helps in osmotic balance maintenance but the main gamma globulin which is the immunoglobulins the antibodies and they are involved in the defense of the body so b is 3 and albumin is the main plasma protein which maintains the osmotic balance so let us check a is 2 b is 3 and c is 1 so the answer is number 4 question number 68 rr code need 2018 calcium is important in skeletal muscle contraction because it now students if you remember suppose this is an actin and we know that actin is made up of is made up of f actin and each f actin consists of many g actin monomers so these are g actin on every g actin there is an active site for myosin but what happens throughout the length there is another protein which is tropomyosin and on the top of tropomyosin there are troponin protein at regular interval so this is troponin now what happens this troponin and tropomyosin mask the active sites for myosin on actin so contraction does not take place now whenever the impulse comes the calcium is released from sarcoplasmic reticulum this calcium binds to the c site of troponin in such a way that there will be a change in the conformation of troponin and tropomyosin and this active site will get exposed and it will bind with the active site on myosin they will come close to each other they will bind with each other and there will be contraction so let us see it detaches the myosin head from actin no it activates myosin atps no it binds to troponin to remove the masking of active sites on actin for myosin yes it prevents formation of bond between myosin cross bridge and actin filament no so the answer the best option is definitely answer number 3 students the next question rr code need 2018 question number 69 zoology which of the following is an occupational respiratory disorder occupational means it is a respiratory disorder affecting the lungs which is related to occupation let us see botulism now this is not related to uh, uh, occupation or the work this is caused by clostridium botulinum bacteria silicosis yes this is because of the prolonged inhalation of silica dust in glass industries marble industry there is silica dust and prolonged inhalation leads to fibrosis of the lungs so this is an occupational disorder anthracis is another bacterial disease it is caused by bacillus anthracis and emphysema is also respiratory disorder but it is not related to occupation students it is due to chronic cigarette smoking so the answer is directly answer number 2 Let's see one more question. RR code need 2018 question number 7070. Which one of the following statement is we have to mark incorrect. Now, glycolysis operates as long at a, as it is supplied with NAD that can pick up hydrogen atoms. It is true. Glycolysis occurs in cytosol. Yes, we know that. Enzymes of PCA that is Krebs cycle are present in mitochondrial matrix. Yes, we have studied this student except succinic dehydrogenase which is present on the inner mitochondrial membrane all the other enzymes are present in the mitochondrial matrix now oxidative phosphorylation takes place in outer mitochondrial membrane the c should not be there no this is wrong 
it takes place on inner mitochondrial membrane all right so they have asked the incorrect answer would be four don't get confused students because here also one enzyme is present on inner membrane but most of them others are present in matrix only but this is absolutely wrong so our answer will definitely be option number four Next question, NEET 2018, RR code, question number 71, Nissel bodies are mainly composed of. Now, what are Nissel bodies? If you remember when we read about neurons, we said that in the neurons, in, on the cell body and on the dendrites, there are some bodies, some particles which are made up of RER and free ribosomes and we call them Nissel's granules or Nissel's particles. This is what has been asked. Let us see. This is the direct option given answer is 4 now rr code need 2018 the next question is question number 72 select the incorrect match incorrect the first is sub metacentric chromosomes now if you remember students on the basis of shape there can be metacentric which are v shape both arms equal there can be sub metacentric which are l shape so this is right now allosomes are sex chromosomes yes there are autosomes and there are allosomes. Allosomes are sex chromosomes. Now, lamb brush chromosomes are diplotene divalence. Yes, students, where are lamb brush chromosomes found? They are found in the oocytes of amphibians. Right? They are giant chromosomes. And they are found in the diplotene stage. Polydene chromosomes in the oocytes? No. This is wrong. So, this is the answer. Where are polytene chromosomes found? They are also giant chromosomes and they are found in the salivary glands of some insects like drosophila. So the incorrect answer is, which is our correct answer, option number 4. Let's solve one more question students, RR code D 2018, it is question number 73. Many ribosomes may associate with a single mRNA to form multiple copies of a polypeptide simultaneously. We know that ribosome is uh, the protein factory and when many ribosomes will attach to a mRNA, this is mRNA and they are attached like this. So there will be synthesis of many polypeptide chains simultaneously. Such string of ribosomes are termed as direct question, it is polysome. Please, uh, please note the answer is number three let's solve one more question students question number 74 need 2018 rr code which of the following event does not occur in rough endoplasmic reticulum we know students there are two types of er rer and ser rer is involved in protein synthesis and secretion so this is involved in protein synthesis and secretion Whereas smooth ER is involved in lipid and steroid synthesis. Now let's see cleavage of not signal it should be single cleavage of single peptide yes because peptide means it is related something related to protein synthesis so it will be a function of RER protein glycosylation students glycosylation is a work of what it is a work of Golgi body. Glycosylation means addition of carbohydrate group. That means formation of glycoprotein, glycolipid. This all occurs in Golgi body because Golgi body has glycosyl transferase enzyme. So this is definitely, uh, this does not occur in RER. But protein glycosylation, the, uh, um, uh, this protein since it is written, so definitely protein is being made in RER. So this could be or could not be the choice. Let us see why. Protein folding, yes, it will all be done. It's a part of protein formation, phospholipid synthesis. Now students, this is a direct answer because phospholipid is a type of lipid and lipid synthesis does not occur in RER. This is a function of SER. So this definitely does not occur in RER. The main confusion occurs with this, the second one. So students, please note that although glycosylation process happens in Golgi, but protein glycosylation means that definitely RER will also contribute. So the best option, the uh, undisputed option would be answer 4. Phospholipid synthesis will never occur in rough ER. Please note the answer. Students, let's see, let's see question number 75 in RR code NEET 2018. Which of the following terms describe human dentition? Now, the first is pleurodont. No, pleurodont means the teeth are just, you know, attached. Uh, but they are not embedded in the jaw bone whereas our teeth are attached they are 
embedded deep into the sockets in the jaw bone and this is called thecodont so definitely our teeth are not pleurodont pleurodont teeth are found in reptiles so this is this could not be the option now second is diphyodont diphyodont means teeth will appear twice in lifetime now all our teeth are not diphyodont because the third molar and both the premolars they appear only once in lifetime in the permanent dentition but other than that the canines the incisors the first and second molars they all appear twice one as the milk teeth one as the permanent teeth so most of it are diphyodont and we have different different types of teeth which is called heterodont hetero means different like incisor canine premolars molars so basically our teeth are thecodont embedded into jaws diphyodont appears twice in life and heterodont having different types so answer is 2 Now, students, after question seventy-five, the part which is covered in zoology is question number seventy-eight. The botany questions will be dealt by uh, Himanshu Agrawal sir. So, let's see question number seventy-eight in RR code NEET two thousand eighteen. Which part of poppy plant is used to obtain the drug smac? Now, smac we know is also called heroin, right? And this is diacetyl morphine, and this is obtained from poppy plant, which is Papaver somniferum. and this is obtained from latex it's a line given in ncert that heroin or smac is obtained or extracted from latex of poppy plant answer is option number 2 now students after question 78 the next question in rr code need 2018 in the zoology portion is question number 81 hormone secreted by placenta to maintain pregnancy are now this is again a direct line of ncert human reproduction chapter hcg is human chorionic gonadotropin yes it is secreted by placenta hpl is human placental lactogen this is also secreted by placenta progestogens and estrogens are also secreted by placenta so all these are the hormones a line of ncert let us see the other options in this students oxytocin is not released by placenta oxytocin is released by posterior pituitary and here if we talk prolactin is not secreted by placenta prolactin is secreted by anterior pituitary and in this glucocorticoids are secreted by adrenal cortex gland and not by placenta so answer is option number 1 the next question in zoology portion in neet 2018 rr code is question number 82 the contraceptive saheli now saheli we know it is a, a research product of india it was researched in central drug research institute lucknow it was developed by this institute and this is a non steroidal non hormonal oral pill it is called once a week pill it should be taken only once in a week so it is an iud intrauterine device no then how does it work students it is anti estrogen so it will block the estrogen receptors in the uterus so estrogen will not be able to proliferate the endometrium so even if fertilization occurs then that fertilized ovum will not have the endometrium ready for implantation so implantation will not happen all right let us see it increases the concentration of estrogen no it blocks estrogen receptors in the uterus preventing eggs from getting implanted yes it is a post coital contraception no post coital is iud's estrogen progesterone combinations this has got nothing to do with post coital contraception answer is 3 students question number 83 need 2018 rr code let us see i always tell you if the question is long please don't get afraid it could be very simple question let us see the difference between spermiogenesis and spermiation is now direct question from ncert we know that in the process of sperm formation there is all the three stages of spermatogenesis and finally when the spermatids are formed now they are haploid structures four spermatids will be formed from a primary spermatocyte now there will be transformation now there will be no division there will only be transformation of spermatids to form spermatozoa that is sperm and this process is directly written in ncert is known as spermiogenesis and when these spermatozoa are formed then they take nutrition from the sertoli cells and then they are finally released from the seminiferous tubules that is known as spermiation so now let us see the options in spermiogenesis 
spermatozoa from sertoli cells are released in the cavity of seminiferous tubules no you don't have to read further this is absolutely wrong in spermiogenesis spermatozoa are formed yes while in spermiation spermatids are formed wrong spermatids are formed by spermatogenesis so this is wrong in spermiogenesis spermatids are formed no in spermiogenesis spermatozoa are formed we don't have to read further in spermiogenesis spermatozoa are formed yes from the spermatids while in spermiation spermatozoa which are you know taking nutrition from the uh, sertoli cells and then they are released from sertoli cells into the cavity of seminiferous tubules yes this is absolutely correct ncrt direct question answer is option number 4 so now students let us see the next question that is question number 84 the code is rr neat 2018 from zoology portion and the question says the m this is this is wrong students this is a printing error it is but the printing error is not in your uh, exam paper it is actually amnion so the amnion of mammalian embryo is derived from now what is amnion we know that around the embryo there are extra embryonic protective layers like amnion chorion we have read in detail so amnion is the protective covering around embryo and suppose this is the embryo this is the amnion here there is amniotic cavity which is filled with amniotic fluid which provides protection to the embryo now how this amnion is formed if you remember we have discussed in the class in detail which i am not going right now into details but we have seen that the floor is formed by epiblastic cells and these out of these epiblastic cells some cells which convert into amnion they are called amniogenic cells or amnioblast cells and they are actually modified ectoderm so the floor is formed by epiblastic ectodermal cells and the roof is formed by extra embryonic mesoderm so basically in this amnion there is the floor which is formed by ectoderm and from which these ectodermal cells are derived they are derived from epiblast layer and the roof is formed by mesoderm and this is not the mesoderm from which organs are formed this is the extra embryonic mesoderm we have discussed in the um, chapter in detail i told you also that this is very very important so now amnion is formed by ectoderm and mesoderm let us see this would be the correct option all right now the main confusion that arises in this question is this is endoderm mesoderm endoderm has no role in it we already know no problem here this is ectoderm so ecto and endo again no problem it should not be a confusion now the main confusion comes with option number 1 which is mesoderm and trophoblast don't get confused with this trophoblast students this um, uh, uh, we have already discussed in detail that how the epiblast is formed and how from these epiblast the amniogenic cells are formed which are the ectodermal cells so it is slightly tricky question slightly tougher question but the answer we have already discussed in our lectures is it is formed from ectoderm and mesoderm you note this down then we'll do the next question now let's see another question code rr and uh, neat 2018 is question number 85 it is from evolution chapter in 12th class the similarity of bone structure in four limbs of many vertebrates is an example of now students we know that the four limbs of man are for grabbing things the four limbs of cheetah is for running the four limbs of whale is for swimming the four limbs of bat is for flying so they have different different functions because of the different habits habits and habitats but they have the same structure same origin and the organs which have the same origin and different functions are called homologous organs so this is an example of homology whereas analogous are the organs which have the different origin but same function due to sharing of habitat analogy is an example of convergent evolution and adaptive radiation also means that they have different origins but they are living together in the same type of uh, uh, i'm sorry adaptive radiation means that they have a common point but due to different different habitats they they have you know radiated like adaptive radiation in marsupials adaptive radiation in placenta we placental mammals we read but here this is a direct example of homologous organs that is homology answer is option number 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आर आर कोड नीट टू थाउजेंड एटीन क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी सिक्स इन विच डिजीज डज मॉस्किटो ट्रांसमिटेड पैथोजन कॉजेज क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लमेशन ऑफ लिम्फैटिक वेसल्स नाउ स्टूडेंट्स रिंग वर्म वी नो इज अ फंगल डिजीज एंड देर इज नो ट्रांसमिशन बाय मॉस्किटो इन रिंग वर्म इट इज नॉट एट ऑल एसोसिएटेड एस्कैरियास वी नो इट इज ड्यू टू दी एस्कैरिस लिम्ब्रिकॉइडस which is a round worm and in this also there is no mention of any mosquito bite it is not transmitted by any mosquito bite it is by the ingestion of the eggs of the ascaris so this is also could not be the answer elephantiasis or filariasis this is caused by a round worm which is bucureria bancroftii or sometimes bucureria malaya and these round worms parasitic round worms are transmitted by the bite of female culix mosquito and then when they enter into the human body they affect lymphatic vessels they cause their inflammation and it leads to the gross abnormality of the lower limbs of the genital region you remember the hathi paw disease in which the legs the genital the scrotum become swollen so this is the answer because it is transmitted by mosquito chronic inflammation of lymphatic vessels occurs so both the criteria are getting fulfilled amebiasis is basically caused by ant amoeba histolytica and this is also caused by ingestion of food and water contaminated with the cyst of these ant amoeba histolytica so all the other three options 1 2 and 4 are not related to mosquito bite and not related to lymphatic system answer is option number 3 now students the next question in rr code of neet 2018 is question number 87 which of the following is not an autoimmune disease not an autoimmune autoimmune means in which our own body forms antibodies against our own cells right now the first option is alzheimers now alzheimers we have read in nervous system students that it is caused due to decreased acetylcholine there is progressive dementia loss of memory which we have seen in the movie black also amitabh bachchan was suffering from this alzheimers disease only and it is generally considered due to gene mutation rheumatoid arthritis we know it's an autoimmune disease and in this antibodies are formed against the synovial membrane so yes this is an autoimmune disorder psoriasis is again uh, in a uh, skin disease and this is also thought to be because of autoimmunity and vitiligo that means white patches on the skin this is also skin disorder this has also uh, been found to be associated with autoimmune immune immunity so basically the answer is answer 1 now students please note that this is uh, you know um, uh, actually if we look into the details of this question then now the research is as they are going on the scientists are also indicating that there could be some alzheimers which could be because of sometimes alzheimers could also be because of autoimmunity so actually now all of these are considered to have role of autoimmunity in their causation but at our level at neat level definitely according to me the best answer should be alzheimers because these three are definitely autoimmune disorders so according to me the best answer would be answer 1 now students let us discuss the last question from the zoology part in rr code neet 2018 and it is question number 89 question 90 will be discussed in the botany section among the following set of examples of divergent evolution select the incorrect option now in these questions we have to be very careful they are asking incorrect options divergent evolution means they must be having a common origin a common ancestor and then because of different different habitats they have evolved into different different organs performing different different functions so basically here are given homologous organ sets homologous organs are given and we have to find out the incorrect that means which one is not homologous now brain of bat man and cheetah these all three are mammals so the brain are definitely homologous so this could not be the answer heart of bat man and cheetah again we know they all are mammals so same origin so these two have the same origin they all are homologous four limbs of bat man and cheetah again i just told you our four limbs have uh, uh, you know evolved to grab things 
bat for flying cheetah for running but the origin is same so brain heart and four limbs of all these three animals are examples of homologous organs let us see the fourth option eye of octopus bat and man now students octopus is a mollusk it is a non chordata and bat and mammals are bat and man are mammals that means vertebrates that means chordates in chordates also they are the most specialized ones so definitely they could not have the same origin so they do not have same origin but because they are performing eyes are performing the same function of vision that is why this is an example of convergent evolution or students analogous organs and this would be our answer because they have asked which of the following is not homologous so this is not homologous so the answer is answer 4 now students just a line of word i am sure that after seeing all the video solutions most of you must be very happy to uh, uh, get most of the answers correct which is very good i hope that you all get a very good college a very dream college of yours but students even if you have not performed that well don't lose hope uh, don't lose hope because uh, in nature there is a place for everyone and we just have to follow our heart we just have to work hard and everything has its own time to take place so don't lose hope don't lose heart there's always a next time so all the best to you and um, very best of luck for the result thank you